Russia's first modern civil war was known as the Time of Troubles, a prolonged period of political uncertainty, civil unrest, and foreign occupation that followed the peaceful reign of Tsar Fyodor I, the only surviving son of Ivan the Terrible. With the Rurikid dynasty now seemingly at an end, in 1598 a council of the land selected the boyar Boris Godunov to be Russia's new Tsar. But Godunov's early accomplishments were soon undone by crop failures, peasant flight, and two years of famine, leaving the core Muscovite lands devastated and depopulated. Some interpreted the catastrophe as God's punishment for Russia's sins. Others blamed Godunov, who died in 1605 after only seven years on the throne. Muscovites struggled to produce a new czar, an autocrat to rule all of Orthodox Russia, for the rule of the boyar satisfied no one, and civil war threatened a disunited realm. Sensing an opportunity to expand the reach of his Catholic faith, Poland's King Sigismund concocted a plan to seize the Muscovite state. The agent for Sigismund's plot was a young man who would later be known as the first false Dmitri, a pretender to the Muscovite throne who claimed to be a son of Ivan the Terrible, whose actual son Dmitri had in fact died years earlier from a knife wound to the throat at the age of eight. It was false Dmitri's arrival in Moscow in 1605 that set off Russia's civil war. Two more false Dmitris, each claiming to be the rightful Tsar, would soon follow. Backed by the defecting Russian soldiers and pronounced Tsar by a boyar council, the first false Dmitri alienated the boyars by converting to the Catholic faith and surrounding himself with Polish advisors and soldiers. After only 11 months, the boyars, led by Vladimir Shusky, murdered Dmitri and massacred his supporters. In May 1606, Shusky's supporters pronounced him Russia's new Tsar. Enjoying a narrow base of support and little authority in the land, Shusky himself was deposed after only four years, and in July 1610, the boyars invited Polish forces into Moscow. But even as Patriarch Germogin, the leader of the Russian Orthodox Church, refused to bless Polish rule, there was little he could do to prevent foreigners from overrunning the Muscovite state. The Protestant Swedes occupied northern Russia, while Polish forces belonging to King Sigismund advanced on Moscow. With Patriarch Germogin in Polish custody and the Kremlin under foreign occupation, it fell to ordinary Russians to organize a national resistance against the Poles, a feat that is immortalized in the 1939 Soviet film Minin and Pajarski. It was the butcher Kuzma Minin who organized the militia and who recruited Prince Pajarski, now the commander of a volunteer army, to lead Russia's battle against the Poles. Entering Moscow in 1612, the forces under Minin and Pajarski liberated the Kremlin as the Polish army retreated. All told, more than a million Russians died during the conflict. But it was not until the election of a new czar in 1613 that the time of troubles came to an end. Appointed by a council of the land that represented the church and the boyars, Russia's new ruler would be the 16-year-old Mikhail Romanov, whose dynasty would later become synonymous with Russia's continental empire and would last for more than 300 years.